Even as our privacy hangs by a thread, many conservatives are handing government the scissors. They believe that they will be exchanging privacy for safety. They also believe they hold the moral high ground. They have nothing to hide. We thought it might be worth testing that belief, so we sought the help of a model citizen. Instead of trying to find virtue in Washington, we created a hypothetical good guy, a paragon of middle-class virtues. I'm talking about a hard-working, honest, brave, trustworthy, courteous, cheerful, thrifty, patriotic American. Meet Bradley White. Call me Brad. Brad lives in a modest home in a shining suburb near a major city in the southeast. Brad is respected in his community. As leader of his son's Boy Scout troop, he teaches marksmanship and gun safety. Last year, he earned the Neighborhood Association Award for Best Kept Yard. His wife runs a part-time business from home, making scented candles, which she sells all over the world on the internet. Last year, she and Brad went to a candle conference in Spain. Unlike most people, Brad practices restraint and moderation in all things. He uses his credit card sparingly and pays his bills on time. You can check that out yourself, because the Graham-Leach Act passed by Congress makes all of Brad's personal financial information just a few mouse clicks away. Brad's past is squeaky clean. We know because the Patriot Act and wiretapping precedents set by the White House have cleared away all legal roadblocks to Brad's personal information. His internet history, library records, book purchases, travel records, and video store rentals show no sign of suspicious activity. Brad has never visited a porn site on the web or rented a porn movie. He has never attended a protest or been a member of a union. Brad appears to be in good health, although he does take Lipitor for his high cholesterol. His credit card statement shows that he just joined a gym, however, so he's expected to be back in shape soon. Brad proudly carries the new national ID card approved by Congress in 2005. He thinks it's a good idea because the president says it will help catch terrorists. Now that you know Brad, let's follow him through one unhappy day in his near future. We'll be able to track Brad's movement precisely because the National ID card contains a microchip that identifies Brad and specifies his location. If that fails, the government has mandated that Brad's cell phone contain a GPS tracking device. They can pinpoint his location anywhere on Earth. Either system also can be used to issue him a parking or a speeding ticket. Fortunately, Brad never speeds or neglects to feed the meter. Brad leaves the house at 7 a.m. on his way to a doctor's appointment. He's running late, so he stops at McDonald's to order a sausage McMuffin to go. A British investment firm has just acquired Brad's company. All employees must have a new physical as part of what the company calls the organic transition. No one in Brad's department is being laid off, for which Brad is deeply grateful. A mandatory physical seems a small price to pay. I have nothing to hide. During his doctor's visit, Brad fills in a few gaps in his medical history, which are instantly scanned into the computer. Brad's blood is taken, his weight measured to the third decimal, and the receptionist scans his national ID card for billing purposes. Brad is pleased to hear that he will never have to fill out a paper form again. Whatever. It's not like I'm hiding anything. <coughs> As Brad drives to work, the results of his physical are speeding around the globe. Chemists in India conduct an instant DNA profile from his blood. It includes information about Brad's genetic risk for heart disease, cancer, mental illness, and even homosexuality. Brad's health data can now be correlated with every other aspect of his home and work life. This holds special interest for insurance firms and employers. Well, not if you have nothing to hide. As Brad drives the last few miles to the office, Human Resources is already processing the new insurance data from his physical. On the plus side, his new gym membership reduces his overall health liability. Unfortunately, that sausage McMuffin he had for breakfast shows a lack of respect for his health. As a result, his premiums have tripled. No need to tell him now. The amount will be automatically deducted from his paycheck. 
Brad arrives at work to begin his usual sedentary routine. Hey Brad, how was Diane's presentation? Diane is Brad's boss. Her computer sounds an alert to let her know an employee has used her name in an email. She monitors Brad's response. It bombed. I think she misread the target audience. She should have let one of us run the event. I can think of at least five or six areas she should have hit but didn't. Not what I'd call a successful product launch. Diane summons Brad to her office. I have nothing to hide. <laughs> Brad's boss does not mention the email she has read. Instead, she shows him a chart of his productivity based on monitoring of his internet usage done by a hired consulting firm. Because he sometimes visits what are deemed to be non-work related sites, Brad's salary will be reduced by 35%. In addition, his company emails have been sent to an off-site management psychologist for recommendations on how to manage Brad. Those emails are now part of a database used by the FBI to identify unstable personalities. The FBI wants to talk to Brad. Why does his wife send packages overseas? This photo was posted on his son's website. Explain the following purchases. Lawn fertilizer, motor oil, gasoline, paint thinner, 200 pounds of candle wax, Bin Laden crockery, 200 rounds of small bore ammunition, contact cement, batteries, and a trip to Spain. The government has all the evidence it needs to hold Brad indefinitely without charging him with a crime. Thanks to the reinterpretation of the law by the Bush administration with the backing of the Supreme Court. But I have no... 